Welcome to the solutions for the AP Physics Kinematics Problem Set, Problems 1 through 3. All right, let's go ahead and jump in and get started here. Uh, I'm going to show you, especially as we get going with the problems to solve, kind of a technique that I would encourage you to use. Um, and that is, as we read the problem, we underline and uh, label, if necessary, key uh, information. Number one, we have a car traveling eastward. Um, and it says, if a car is traveling eastward, can its acceleration, and we would call that A, be westward? And then, this is simply not a yes or no question. We're also asked to explain our answer. So let's take a look at Fred and Barney here. Uh, and they are traveling eastward. So we would say that their velocity is uh, eastward towards the east, can Fred and Barney's acceleration be westward? And the answer to that question is yes. Their acceleration can be westward if they're slowing down. If they're slowing down, their velocity would still be in an eastward direction, but in order for them to slow down, there would have to be some force acting on the car to slow it down. We're getting a little bit ahead of ourselves as far as units are concerned, but no harm there. You know, no harm in learning something a little early here. So we'd have to have a force acting in the opposite direction of the motion of Fred and Barney's car here to slow it down. Whether that's uh, air resistance, friction in the tires, uh, uh, the brakes, typically we would call it the braking force, uh, is acting in the opposite direction to slow the car down. Well, one of the things that you'll learn, Newton's second law, if an unbalanced force acts on an object, there must be an acceleration proportional to that force and in the same direction as that force. So here's a case where we have an object, this car traveling eastward, and its acceleration is westward. Okay? All right, moving on to uh, number two. If the average velocity of an object is zero in some time interval, average velocity, V, of an object is zero in some time interval, so that's T, what can you say about the displacement? And our symbol for displacement in physics and AP physics is X of the object during that interval. So we're looking at the same time interval T. Okay? Well, let's use this example pictured here. We have an alien spaceship picking up a cow. Apparently they're interested in investigating about cows. And so during the process, you know, they've picked up humans before, and they're pretty light to ship up to the spaceship there. But in the process of picking up this cow, uh, with a cow being so much more massive, the cow actually gets suspended in midair here. So we have a cow suspended in midair being picked up by an alien spaceship, and the cow's velocity is zero. And this problem says uh, that this average velocity is zero in some time interval meaning it's not just an instantaneous, at this moment it's suspended, but that it's during some time interval that we'll call T. Okay? What can you say about the displacement X of the object during that time interval? Very clearly what we see here is that if the, if the object is at rest during that time interval, that its displacement X would also have to be zero. It can't. If it's not moving over a time interval, then there can be no change in its position over that time interval. And I hope that makes sense. All right. We're going to scroll down here to number three now. That's what we have to deal with here. 
The figure below shows strobe photographs taken of a disc moving from left to right. So moving from left to right under different conditions. The time interval between the images is constant. What that means is the time in between successive pictures taken by the strobe photograph uh, is constant. The times are all the same between the successive pictures. Taking the direction to the right to be positive. Describe the motion of the disk in each case. For which case is, and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to color code A, B, and C, different colors, and map this out on, this, uh, on these diagrams. The acceleration positive. So we're going to mark places in which the acceleration is positive. What does that mean? Acceleration is the rate of change of velocity. So in which diagrams does it show the object speeding up in a positive direction? Remember, right is positive. Okay, and so in all these up and all these pictures, the object is traveling to the right. Okay, um, I'm kind of getting away from my color code here for a moment, but we have to take that into consideration as well. Well, I'm going to underline places in which the acceleration is positive. Where would the the speed, the velocity? be getting faster and faster in a positive direction. Well, this interval right here shows that as the um, object goes to the right in a positive direction, the distance between successive, successive pictures also increases. What does that indicate? That indicates that that object has to be speeding up. And if the object is speeding up, that means it's accelerating. Okay, uh, where else, if any? This third picture uh, down at the bottom here also shows that the um, distance increasing with, with uh, equal increments of time. This, once again, indicates that the object is speeding up and therefore must be accelerating in a positive direction. Now I'm going to switch over to red for B. We want the acceleration to be negative. Well, this is going to, the acceleration would be negative for any part pictures or parts of pictures in which the object is slowing down, indicating that there has to be a force, like our answer to number one above, a force acting on it in the opposite direction, causing it to lose velocity. Well, if we take a look at the first picture here, I believe it's picture A, we can see in this range that the object has positions that are decreasing with successive equal increments of time. What that indicates to us is that the object is slowing down, which means it's accelerating in a negative direction. Okay? And I don't see anywhere else on the other two pictures where that is true. Our third one, I'm going to color code in green. Indicate any areas where the velocity is constant. Well, what would this look like? We would be looking for uh, any pictures or portions of pictures in which the distance between successive photographs is equal. And it certainly looks like, for the most part, though you could argue there is some variation there. But you can pick out spots, especially in here through definitely these four pictures right here, certainly look like they're equidistant from each other in equal amounts of time. And that indicates that the velocity is constant. So some good preliminary questions here to get you thinking about objects in motion in one direction, motion in one plane. Um, and we have a couple other questions that we'll take a look at here for introducing this concept. Uh, in class.